Okay, I think I got all the buttons pushed. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Vormithrax. This is Cataclysm, of course. Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. We are starting up a brand new challenge. Yay, brand new challenge. <laughs> Don't ask me what happened to the previous challenge. I never answer. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> We shall not talk about the end of the previous challenge. <laughs> Feel free to chat about it, but uh, I won't talk about it on camera because we never want to spoil the just absolute joy that uh, we encounter when we finish up a challenge. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, new challenge is going to be the Cyber Revolution. We are, and I picked this for a couple of reasons. Um, we're going to play the Lab Escape scenario. That's one of the reasons. We're going to play the Bionic Monster Profession. That's another reason. And as part of this, I've, I've done this kind of challenge a couple of times in the past where I play the Bionic Monster and uh, I try to remove all the negative CBMs. I've never once come close to succeeding at it and it's due to a lot of changes that have occurred and this particular scenario just was never balanced with the changes as they went along and there's a lot of problems with it. So we'll see if some changes that I know have occurred have made it survivable or doable um, under my normal game world conditions. So, <laughs> um, and then finally, uh, we're also going to be trying to recruit some fellow cyborgs to join the, uh, the cyber revolution. Um, there's a particular point to that. There's a new thing that's been added that you can do with, uh, some of the cyborgs and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if I can manage to do it. First, I got to stay alive. That's going to be hard enough. Uh, but yeah, there's three different things. The lab escape I wanted to test because changes to the battery system are going to make it more difficult to get out via the what I consider the traditional method so yeah <laughs> um, that's because you don't have the the uh, mysterious magical battery goop anymore and if you go to create like a soldering iron you don't have battery power you can just throw into it you've got to find an appropriate uh, battery module or uh, I forget what the term is um, the, the the packs uh, of the right size and it's got to have charge in it. Otherwise you ended up in this another little loop that you have a problem with uh, where you can't make a soldering iron without a soldering iron, that kind of thing. So it'll, it'll make more sense when I get into it. Um, so we're going to test that, see just how hard it is to actually get the power generation you need to uh, get out that way. Um, the cyborg thing, you'll see. We'll, we'll Hopefully we'll get to a lab that allows us to attempt to recruit some fellow cyborgs. That's kind of a new thing to the game that a lot of people probably aren't aware of. Um, yeah, so we got a few things we're going to be both testing just for my own knowledge and edification purposes, as well as hopefully have a good time trying to uh, get this done. And then the cyborg remove all the negative CBMs thing. God damn, that's hard. It is so hard. If you never played the Bionic Monster Challenge... Oh, man, it, it's hard. So, I mean, changes to the whole... I mean, when it was originally made, it was way different process for taking out CBMs and so on. So, I don't know. The difficulty factor in removing CBMs is so freaking high. And the negative effects from some of the CBMs is so bad that uh, you're pretty much on a really short timer. And um, you got to get certain things done pretty damn quick. So, we'll see. Um... And I'll talk, I'll talk about each of those as we go along. So I'm, I'm kind of scattered at the moment until we get this started. But I haven't actually created the character yet. Uh, I, I was going to do it. And then I said, nah, let's do it on camera because people might have comments or suggestions or, or ideas and so on. I'm also hoping to maybe use an alternative way out of the lab that people haven't seen before. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, so we got a lot going on. We'll get the character creation done fairly quickly. I know the most, most things I need to have in order to get out my traditional method that I mainly want to test, but I also want to try to throw a few points into another skill or trait to uh, try the alternate method as well. Um, so people know that it's not just one way out. Um, so we'll chat about that as well. But let's say hi to you folks. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> one rune, one rune scapey boy. Welcome a ton. Shadar. Uh, I probably should actually read the comments here. Do, do, do. Howdy, Karacher, Lord Omega, Sky Breach. Yeah, if you haven't tried removing CBMs in volume, you have no idea how hard this is going to be. <laughs> and everybody knows that's watched my streams of any any duration. If you're 
If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know just how happy I am with the whole <laughs> CBM install removal reported percent number thing. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, do, do, do. Uh, mainly I don't use the, I, I used to use the manual gradual aim adjustment, uh, aim adjustment fairly regularly when I first started using it, but after you've fired guns in the game a couple million times, you kind of know how much time is going to go by, how far the zombies are going to move, how much space you're going to have between you and them, and once you've got a feel for that, there's no point to using the incremental adjustment factor, um... It's extremely rare that it's going to make any kind of a difference in the fight. By the time I'm pulling a gun out, it's already a certain kind of a situation that's going to be fairly rare for me to need to deal with. And if it is extremely time critical, meaning a, um, a few seconds or a few action points could make a difference, I will increment my way through it until I get to the point I like or until the zombie steps forward one or whatever. But it's a really, really narrow circumstance where I just don't automatically know where things are going to end up when I hit precise aim or careful aim or so on. So that's pretty much why I, I don't use the manual adjustment all that much anymore, just because I've got such a feel for the movement rates and uh, the effects and what's going to happen that I really don't need to do that all that much. I do recommend it. It's, it's a smart thing to do in certain situations, but um, at certain ranges with certain weapon types against certain zombies... It just doesn't matter. Uh, just just hit the key to, for C or P for close or for careful or precise aim and go about your business. Um, that's pretty much why. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, I have also updated the uh, channel or the experimental build. So I know there are some issues with the current build, uh, some clothing issues with a recent PR that went in that makes things too big. Um, I don't care. If it's in, it hasn't been fixed quite yet. I'm fine with it. Um, we'll, we'll take the negative if it comes to us. So, not a big issue there. Um, but yeah, we are up on the... Uh, it's not the absolute most recent experimental. Because <laughs> uh, apparently they threw a few in in the last hour or so. But uh, I'm on 89.79 right there. So, uh, that's the build we're up to. I didn't see anything that happened in the last couple hours that I think would make any difference. But, uh, yeah, so we're, we're updated there. I also updated the uh, graphics tile set for the uh, Undead tile set version. So we've got all the most recent graphics as well. Uh, ready for the new PRNG implementation in this newer build? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. What are we talking about? No idea what that means. Pseudo random number generator. All right. Well, once I know what it's pseudoing, I will let you know what my opinion is. Um, I don't know anything about that one yet, Sagacious. So once I find out about it, I'll let you know. Um, so, all right. Lab challenge. We're definitely doing that one. Uh, we're doing Bionic Monster. So if you haven't seen a Bionic Monster, here he is in all his glory. And uh, if you look on the right, I'll scroll that. This is the section to pay attention to. So, this, no big deal. Melee 3, Unarmed 3, Dodge 3, Survival 2. I mean, that, that's decent. That's good. Um, not much in the way of clothing. I mean, cargo shorts, okay. Uh, whatever. Um, I think the Bionic Monster Profession was first built for the Frankenstein, he's wandering around in the forest start. <laughs> that's why he's got some of this stuff, I guess. I'm not real sure, but uh, whatever. Some uh, minor clothes items. The noise-canceling headgear is actually necessary. But uh, here's the important area. So, don't care, don't care. Bionic Claws is going to be important. That's going to be our main initial weapon. Scent Vision, I don't think even works unless you're playing an ASCII. Um, there's no way in the tiles to uh, give the scent indicator or information. Metabolic has been nerfed, so I'm a little concerned about Metabolic. Metabolic recently got nerfed. It doesn't provide as much power as it used to. Um, in exchange for the hunger that it generates. So we'll see just how bad the metabolic is. Um, they've been really, really ratcheting down on the power generation CBMs. Um, so yeah, what are we left with? Furnace? I think internal furnace is the last thing. Or is the furnace gone now too? I think actually the furnace went away too, didn't it? 
Somebody remind me, wasn't there a message about the furnace going away? I think it was causing problems with some things, and it might be gone. I don't know if it's permanently gone or temporarily gone or what, but Metabolic has been nerfed, so... Yeah, we'll see. And then everything else. All this other stuff, well, I guess not all from there. Visual Disruptor is not good. Expanded Digestive System is fine. Power Storage is fine. I think everything from here down, including Visual Disruptor, is all bad. So, these all are negative bionics. We are a broken... Bionic Monster. So all of this stuff is bad, bad bionics. Wire-induced stiffness, self-locking thumb, squeaking ankles, a voice remodulator, bionic-induced deformity. I think the voice remodulator doesn't really matter. Endocrine innervator, leaky bionic, bionic short circuit, and motor control overstimulator. So these do various things like increase uh, uh, encumbrance on various body parts. Squeaky ankles makes noise and I think affects your movement points. Um... A lot of different things. The The major one that I absolutely have to get rid of, very first thing, no matter what, is Leaky Bionic. That thing slowly poisons, well, not slowly, that thing poisons your hidden health stat. And it will do it in a fairly quick fashion. It used to be ridiculously quick. That's why I kind of gave up on the Bionic Monster for quite a while, because the Leaky Bionic combined with the changes to the health system and the healing system and... A lot of other systems just made it ridiculously difficult to deal with. And, um, yeah, it's just bad. Uh, short circuit is kind of bad. You can uh, lose all your power, and it makes you fall over and all that kind of stuff. Lose movement points. But there, there's a lot of different effects. Hey there, Nestavar. Thank you very much for the resub. Appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, the Leaky Bionic is the famous one. Always, 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 always pay attention and take get that out first. Very first thing. That's what will kill you. So... <clears throat> I know there's been some changes to the Leaky Bionic effect. I think it is slower, and it doesn't take you as deep into the negative health stat. I think it caps out at some point. So I'm, that's one of the things I'm curious about, and one of the reasons we're trying this Bionic Monster Challenge, to see if that's a little easier to deal with nowadays. So we'll find out. Um, so there we go. That's what we've got to deal with. So we are going to be the Bionic Monster Profession. Trait-wise, things I know I need to, I'm going to take. I'm going to take Fast Healer, and I'm going to take... I'm going to take Self-Aware. <clears throat> um, beyond that, things get a little dicier. we got a lot of options. Um, let's see... I want to try to go a little more on Dex Perception this run, but I might I might have to make some other adjustments. Skill-wise, I know I need to spend points in electronics to test one of the methods to get out. Um, the big thing about lab escapes, especially for newer players that don't know what's going on and how things work and so on, is um, in the character creation system, when you have a skill level, of a, or a particular level of a skill, this list here shows you everything you're going to automatically have the recipes for. So you auto-learn the recipes, all the recipes appropriate for that level. So I don't have to go find books for all of these things. And the EMP grenade is the primary one on this list. There's some other ones that are really useful, really good, and there's reasons for having them. But the EMP grenade, that's the thing that you can use to take out the turret at the top of the lab. And then all you have to do is get through the door, um, which is its own problem. But, uh, Automatic ability to craft the EMP grenade if you take Electronics 4. So that's one of the ways you can really, really help yourself in escaping the lab is the Electronics. Now, an alternate way I'd like to try, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the points, is uh, trapping. And I, I think I'll put two points into it. I'll spend two points so I get three skill. And then we'll see from there. Trapping and survival, or trapping and perception and dex are going to help me to uh, try to disarm some traps. And there's teleporter trap. We're going to try to disarm if we get the opportunity, um, assuming we get a uh, build of the lab that gives us the option. We're going to try to disable it and uh, and then teleport our way out of the top floor instead of having to go through the uh, turret and the door. That is a, a secondary way of getting out of the top of the lab. So. I'm going to try them both, and or, either or, we'll, we'll see, but uh, I wouldn't normally do this, so it's going to be a little rough in my point distribution by trying to cover various options, <laughs> so, yeah, this is not definitely not going to be a min-maxi run. Um, Alright, so, what else? I also usually try to take some computer skill. 
three will get it so I can read the mid-level computer books. Um, so I don't usually spend more than that. And then also, by getting Computers 3, you can see here, with Electronics of 4 and Computers 3, we have the Electrohack option. So, Electronics 4, Computers 3 is kind of my standard. That gets you both the EMP grenade that will uh, disable the turret, as well as the Electrohack, which can uh, hack your way past the, uh, the locked door at the entrance to the lab, in case you don't have the option of getting the ID card. So, there we go. Um, that's kind of my required. Everything else is going to be situational stuff I'll throw in if I can. But let's go fiddle with some other stuff. So negative traits. What are we going to do for negative traits? Um, I don't think I can afford to take... I'm not doing mutations with this run. This is all cyber. This is all, uh, all cyborg specific. So it's CBM, CBM, CBMs. Much as I enjoy my failure rate with CBMs. Oh, that's the other thing. Oh, crap. That's right. I gotta take first aid, otherwise we're not gonna have any chance. Yeah, this is gonna suck. This is gonna suck. Alright. Um, I gotta take first aid in order to both improve my healing rate, as well as uh, my chance for CBM removal. So... I wish I could take more. We'll see if I can squeeze any in. But, um, yeah, let's go down the list here. Uh, I gotta take some negatives. I gotta take it by full 12. I gotta take the full load. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. Um, definitely not carnivore. Uh, I don't want to do the chemical stuff. I, I've burned myself out on all the chemical changes and problems. Uh, so we're not going to do schizophrenic or chemical imbalance. Um... Could do Phasma Tab. I'm a little worried about the uh, some things we're going to run into. Uh, ooh, fragile. Oh, man, fragile. Good old fragile eight-pointer. This if I really, really... One of these days, maybe I'll do a uh, broken monster with genetic downward spiral. That, that'd be quite the, uh, quite the thing to survive. Um, nothing genetic though. Not not for this attempt. What am I going to take? I need at least one fairly high level or high point high option here. Probably gonna be instead of uh imperceptive healer. Oh, I can't even take imperceptive healer? Oh, because I took fast healer. Oh, that's right. That's gonna make it so I can't take those. Ah crap. All right, well, I guess that's fine. We'll go with it. Yeah, High Thirst isn't that bad. High Thirst is pretty easy. I, I try not to take... There's a lot of them that I used to take that basically have no real effect. <laughs> so, if I'm not playing with CB, with NPCs and I don't care about NPCs, taking things like Truth Teller and Ugly are free points. Uh, I, I try not to do that kind of gamey, min maxy <laughs> stuff. When I can, I try to make my choices, even my bad choices, my negative choices, have a consequence against me. So, if I know I'm not going to be doing much with NPCs, taking these has no real effect. Um, and while we are going to be dealing somewhat with NPCs, the method that we're going to be doing it, I don't think these are going to have any effect in. So, I'm not going to take that kind of stuff. Um, I try to make sure all my negative stuff has some kind of an effect. I mean, even Trigger Happy... Technically works, because uh, if I go full auto, I mean, I, I may go full auto instead of a single shot when I don't want to. So, I mean, that 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 is a little cheesy, because I very rarely fire guns, so it's not most often a problem. But uh, it counts. We'll throw it in. Um, <laughs> toe talons, thin skin. Uh, with the list of things I don't want to take, and with the healing ones off the table, this is... I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I'm already going to be super slow, so that's going to be really bad. I've never taken the rigid table manners. Um, I, I don't know. It, it seems more of a hassle than really a, an issue. Um, I mean, it has an effect early, early game. Maybe? <laughs> not even really, because there's so many tables here in the, the lab that it's really a moot point. Um... I mean, in a woods or, I, I don't know, even in a shelter or something where you have to make one might be different, but 
so many apartment areas and bedrooms and tables and such run around this place. I don't think it would make much difference. The largest part of our run is probably going to be in this first lab. So hopefully we get a pretty decently sized one. It's going to suck if I get a one floor, five room lab. Um, man. Pacifist would be pretty funny. Kind of hard to kind of hard to run a, a revolution with a pacifist. I don't know how I'm gonna get to twelve. Food, take the food ones. Okay, I guess I could take meat intolerance. <laughs> I, I've eaten so little meat in the last eight or so challenges. That's almost at the list of uh, no consequence and free points. So. Uh, crappity crap. Yeah, wool allergy. Yeah, some of the some of the clothing type allergies is pretty funny. Junk food intolerance. That would be really rough. Um, I I can't do illiterate. Well, let's do. High Thirst and Heavy Sleeper. If that gets us up to four. I think I might have to take Frail or Fragile. Much as I don't want to. Probably not Fragile. That one's super, super hard. Especially given the problems we're going to have. Let's go ahead and do the Fast Metabolism. Um... I'm going to try not to do the addictive. I'm going to need drugs when I've taken out the uh, CBMs to pump my intelligence as much as I can. Um, animal Discord's fine. Won't affect us in the lab very much, but once we get out, it'll start hitting us. We're up to seven. Asthmatic is another one of those fairly innocuous ones. I mean, well... Depends on how long it takes you to get out of the lab, I guess. But um, given the speed with which I can usually get out of a lab, asthmatic, I don't think would hurt me early game. <clears throat> oh, it'll be annoying. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about that, Mikhail. <laughs> annoying is the name of the game when you're uh, picking bad traits and you got to try to work your way up to 12 so you can get some other things you know you're going to need to get out. Yeah, let's let's be an asthmatic. That'll... that'll Possibly cause some problems a little bit later. Um, one more point. One more point. What's well, a somewhat easy one we can grab? Um, oh yeah, growling voice. Now nah, that that falls into the NPC. Really has no effect. List can't do books. Come on. <laughs> I love my jugs of milk. Love my jugs of milk. That would also remove cheese, which I don't eat that much cheese. I might do lactose intolerance. Nope, no mood swings. <laughs> no nomad, not while I'm stuck in a lab. Come on, one more point. Squeamish. Um, nah, it's no one of those where it really doesn't have an effect. Strong scent. That's that's fine. Animals can come get me. Come get me, animals. Strong scent actually is a bit of a problem, also with zombies. So I like it. Another bad thing to deal with. All right, so there's our negatives. Um, what are we up to? So we've got points. What else did I need to make sure I took? Uh, I want to get a couple more points into dodge. Fab, I can level easily with just random raw materials. Don't care about any of that. Mechanics, um, can, and mechanics does play a role in the bionic equipment, so let's take at least one point there. <laughs> Make sure vacuum sealer has been added to the list. Two points of mechanics. I'm trying to remember where the books... Under the hood gets you to three. I think I need one more point in order to read a mid-level mechanics book to continue my education without having a bootstrap. 
Alright, let's, let's pretend we've got the points to flow into that. Don't care about guns! Don't care about tailoring. We've got, I think, enough of everything else. Alright, so let's... Let's assume that's going to be our end there. Let's try to put more points there. What else do I really, really want to have? Um, no, no. What is going to be super important? I don't have any kind of combat ability currently. So we get Bionic Claws, but we don't have any kind of uh, martial art or anything like that. And if I take any of the uh, weapons or martial arts skills, it's going to burn pretty much all the rest of the uh, points I have. So, self-defense is two. Which of those... Um, hmm. Not going to do a fighting style, I don't think. Possibly one of the self-defense classes. No, no. Uh, do I do the old quick. Three out of my four remaining points. I don't have night vision currently. That's going to be a problem as well. Um, tricks in the lab are... Do I plan on actually getting into any of the vaults and such? And the answer is usually no on the initial escape attempt because I don't have a high enough computer skill to reliably hack my way in. And I don't have the tools to go through the doors, so it's hard to get into barracks and armories and things like that. Um, computers 3 just might maybe be enough to get into the libraries on occasion. Um, I think we'd still fail fairly often with computers 3. My hope is that we can come across a mid-level computer book and uh, bootstrap that up. I can get it to six, we can fairly reliably get into most things, with the sole exception of the, uh, the armory inside the barracks. Hmm. And the, uh, the night vision's primarily going to be useful for that purpose, although we're not going to have a lot of light other than what's generated, so I, I, I so like to take the night vision, but I don't know if I can afford it this time. I don't think I can afford the uh, quick fleet foot, any of that stuff either. It's pretty much either pick a uh, martial arts style or uh, the, I could go night vision plus the self defense class. Anything else really, really throwing out there that I gotta actually take it? I'd love to get the book stuff, not gonna happen. Fluffy tail and gills. That's what I need. I need a fluffy tail and some gills. Alright, let's do this. Let's do... Um, let's do night vision and self-defense. That's the four points between those two. And then self-defense. What what are these pairs with the uh, claws? I don't think bionic claws is listed on any of these. I know ninjutsu that affects everything, so we'd get a benefit there. We're going to be fairly ungainly given our negative bionics, so we're not going to have a lot of uh, a lot of dodge. Currently sitting at uh, ten dex, ten perception. I don't remember what uh, what matches up with that. One second.
Maybe we'll go with, um, oh, now if I take that, ah, crap, that's what I forgot. I forgot just taking the, the, uh, the, the main skill doesn't actually make you effective at it. You've also got to have, uh, unarmed combat of a certain level. What have we got currently? We've got unarmed three. If I can get one single point freed up, we can uh, turn that into a five, which will pretty much get us what we need. Might be able to take Krav Maga. That increases unarmed damage, which I think the clause counts as. And it also can be used with uh, tonfas, which we can find in the lab. Yeah, let's try Krav Maga. I haven't tried Krav Maga in forever. I don't think it bases off of uh, particular stats either. does get a little bit of a bonus from strength but um, everything else I think we'll work with so yes let's try that let's um where do I take a point from can't steal it from computers or electronics I think I'll steal it from Dodge I think it's gonna be more important to do that that'll get us to five unarmed combat That'll uh, give us the maximum output for all of the techniques for um, Krav Maga. There's a whole crap load of them. We get a uh, bunch of bonuses, so that's what we're going to go with. All right, so I think we might be set. Stats, traits, skills. Pretty good list, but it's going to be it's going to be rough. I know I'm probably forgetting something, but I don't want to spend too much time here. Yeah, the reason I kept mech at 3 was not for the benefit of having it at 3, meaning I can make things at level 3. It's that sometimes I'll take a skill level of a certain number just so that I know I can read the mid-level book that will take me even further. So if I have mechanics 1 or 2, that doesn't qualify me if I pick up a mid-level mechanics book to be able to read it and then go to 4, 5, and 6. But if I can get myself... The Mechanics 3, which is where the uh, Under the Hood book takes you, I know the other mid-level Mechanics books all require level 3. So that's kind of sometimes why, why I will throw a particular point. I did the same thing with Computers here. Computers 3 on its own is not very useful, but uh, that gets you to the point where the two different mid-level books uh, require level 3 to be able to advance even first further to a useful stage. So it, it's... Kind of depends on a few things, but uh, that's that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, all right, I think we're just going to go with what we got here. So let's go ahead and save this uh, cyber dude. And what kind of name are we going to get? <clears throat> Dwayne Sky Leary. Nah, let's... Um, I don't have a cool name thought up for him. Jonas Hand. Uh, uh, Theo Gallo, <laughs> Chong Kabosh Kenny. Uh, all right, I like Chong Kabosh Kenny. That sounds fun. So we are Chong Kabosh Kenny, Broken Monster, Bionic Monster, starting in the Challenge Lab. 
All right. <clears throat> Anything else I'm forgetting? I think I've got most of the major points that I try to cover. Fast Healer, by the way, I take specifically for the Bionic Monster because of the negative effects of that Leaky Bionic. Basically, when enough time goes by, if you haven't managed to remove it, you won't heal. Period. You will heal nothing when you go to sleep. So the Fast Healer trait's going to try to keep us ahead of that curve for a longer period of time uh, until we can manage to get that Leaky Bionic out. I mean, it's, it's useful on its own, especially once you get rid of the Leaky Bionic, but I find it particularly helpful against the Bionic Monster's negative cybernetics to have the Fast Healer trait. So, self-aware, it's a point. I like it for this particular challenge as well, so I can see my exact hit points and my exact hidden health stat uh, because of that Leaky Bionic nonsense. So, yeah, I think we're finished. In we go. Krav Magad is. Which kind of lab are we going to get? Alright, started in the jail. You've been locked in a lab with no obvious way out. Find a way to escape or starve to death. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so here we go. We have our inhaler. Taking up a uh, super valuable 0.25 of our 1.75 available volume. Our goofy gear. Cargo shorts being the most valuable. You give us the 1.75. Noise canceling headgear, we're currently deef because we're actually wearing our headgear, which we're going to have to keep wearing it because I can't carry it with that limited amount of volume. Uh, so you won't hear much until I can manage to get some lab coats or some other clothes or something put on that's going to increase my volume. So we'll see. Let's see. And in Digo Day, <laughs> I guess. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. All right, so finally, we're about to get started. Uh, a little over half an hour to get all that yakety yak uh, character gen scenario start explanations done. Here's full character sheet. Sometimes it doesn't show you everything on that other screen. So there is our partial list of bionics. Actually goes down below that. Here is the... Where'd you go, Leaky? There it is. Leaky bionic. So this botched piece of bionic hardware slowly leaks electrolytic compounds piezoelectric nanomaterials and other high-tech contaminants into your bloodstream. Needless to say, this is not good for your health. And they're referring specifically to your hidden health stat. That's the thing that controls how many colds and flus you get, as well as how much sleep healing you get. So, it's always hilarious when I do the Bionic Monster run, and three hours into the run, I get a common cold or I get the flu. <laughs> it's hilarious! Uh, in a very, very bad way. So... Anybody watching, don't expect this to go well. I expect this to go horribly. Um, I think I'm just going to be raging against the cybernetic uh, CBM removal process and percentages yet again. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm not kidding, though. you got to get this thing out really, really fast. And it gets harder and harder the more time that goes by. Because when you fail the installation removal, you take a huge amount of damage... Oh my goodness, I forgot about that. Oh, crappity crap. I needed one more point of strength. <laughs> uh, I forgot something. I needed nine strength. Do we quit and re-roll? Who can answer why I want nine strength instead of eight strength? <laughs> There's a specific reason. Anybody that's watched my previous attempts knows or that uh, knows very specific things about some of the processes. There was a merge that changed the badness of the Leaky Bionic. Whether it has changed it to be less impossible is what we're actually testing. We're testing two or three things here. Pretty much hold your fire. Yeah, when you do a Bionics or a CBM removal, you make the attempt first. You get a pass fail. If you pass, everything's great. CBM's removed. Wonderful. If you fail, though, the game then rolls dice to see how much damage you take. And the high end of the random number of damage is right about this number. <laughs> so, you can flat out kill yourself. I really, really needed one more point to make absolutely certain I wouldn't just insta-kill myself by failing a CBM removal. Ay, ay, ay. Ay. Uh, 
I got to I got to do it. I can't I yeah, I got there's too many CPMs to remove. <laughs> there's too many chances and there's nothing I can do to control the damage values. So, as far as I know, there's no way even with like high first aid or anything else, there's no way I don't believe to adjust um the damage amount that's possible when you remove a CBM and you tank it. So the numbers are so hard to get successful removals to begin with, and then to have instant death be a consequence of failing, it's just too brutal. So we're gonna we're gonna suicide out. That's pretty much why I uh, made a save of that character. So world actually I didn't do anything. We we can start in that same world. New game, custom Cybertron. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Reset character. Uh, get rid of you. Get rid of you. All right, come on, Cyber Dude. Back into Cybertron. All right, we got to fiddle one point. So do I do it the easy way and pop one out of... Let's go back to nine and then put that on nine. So... Yeah, all right, let's do that. So that'll give us base 87. Gave us three more hit points at our max. Doesn't seem like much, but... Um... Uh, pretty sure just that amount should put us right outside the max damage. If it doesn't, oh well. Um, this is the other reason why I consider it critical to take the uh, self-aware trait. That way you know exactly how many hit points you have and whether or not a removal is going to actually kill you or break limbs or anything like that. Um, super, super important. Because the hit point bar system, it can show full bars... But the thing to realize is those bars don't actually adjust what they look like until a certain percentage of damage has occurred. So it could have full bars and you're not at full health. And if that's the case in this situation, you could die with what seems like full health because the bars were all full vertical, but uh, not actually representing the full healing stage. So, the, uh, yeah, it's just too narrow. So there we go. Uh, now I've forgotten what our cool name was. We're gonna have to get another one. Chadwick 8, Smiley, Roy, Jumper, Perkins, Zip Valdez. Shelby Dent. Yeah, that sounds good. Shelby Dent. We're gonna be Shelby Dent. Oh, I know I can spend time maximizing my hit points. I just don't want to risk it. So... The issue is with all of the negative... So when you say just sleep one more day to regen possible hit points, the problem is at a certain stage, the leaky bionic, leaky bionic stops your healing. So let's say it stopped your healing when you were at 81 hit points. All your bars were vertical. You went to sleep thinking you healed up to full. You actually didn't. You would still die. <laughs> so I can't take the chance. All right, uh, so Shelby Dent, we've got, I think everything else is ready to go. Yeah, in we go, Krav Maga. All right, let's do this. Uh, oh, same world, it just put me in a slightly different position. All right, eh, I'm trying to remember here. Um, it's been a while since I did this one. Do I mess with this while the Brute is on his way? Or do I try to dodge him in the hallway? What's my movement rate? Yeah, movement rate sucks. 125. Oh, yeah. I was showing this stuff. So, Leaky Bionic. <laughs> that's that's the long discussion about Leaky Bionic. A lot of dangers involved with this stupid thing. Short circuit's pretty bad. Causes systemic, systemic muscle tremors. Um, also, short circuit your power. So, your bionic power will, will tank. Self-locking thumbs. Makes hand encumbrance a little bit worse. And, uh... Failing to improve your... Yeah, so basically it just makes it worse. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but the uh, only one we're going to focus on is Leaky Bionic. If I'm still alive when we get that thing out, that'll be a major victory all by itself. All right. Um, I can't carry anything right now. Not worried about lockpick or crowbar immediately. There's plenty of opportunity for me to get those built when I'm not dodging the uh, Brute. So if you haven't done a lab escape before, consider this, I guess, a <laughs> extended introduction to lab escapes. We're actually going to be testing two different ways of getting out of the lab. Um, because there have been changes to uh, the battery system, and I think 
that that's causing more difficulty in the primary way of getting out of the labs. And we're going to try to find out just if that's true. I need to actually do a run through to see if the changes to the battery system have kind of nerfed the methods of getting out. Um, so we're going to find that out and uh, also test an alternate way of getting out. So we're on level four. All right, we got a pretty good sized lab. No idea if that's the bottom level or not. Check our uh, our main world map. Oh my god! <laughs> really? Uh, community garden has a lab? <laughs> I'm going to assume the entrance is probably in one of these houses. There's probably a basement in one of these houses that the lab actually exits up into. Uh, yeah, it's got to be one of these nearby houses. It's definitely not going to be the community garden. That's just where I happen to be standing directly above me. New Ipswich. Huh. I wasn't expecting to end up in the middle of a fair-sized city. That's going to be interesting. I've got the settings on 7-3, seven, 7 size 3 spacing, which is what I've been kind of settled into lately, which still leaves pretty good gaps between the cities, so this is a bit surprising that we are going to end up, uh, if we survive to escape, we're going to pop up right into the middle of a big city. That'll be fun. I like it. I like it. Uh, pretty good city center area. I like all these banks. Between th if, we, if we actually got to three banks, that would give us all of the high-end uh, bank loot. <laughs> We'd have full power armor suits, we'd probably have the walk-through-walls CBMs, uh, we'd have all sorts of stuff. But, they like to put banks right next to the city centers because of the way they generate nowadays. Uh, see, we got another bank way up here, that's that's convenient. Alright, we're not going to be there for a while, first we got to get out of this place, so... What, were, what else was I talking about? Alright, so skills, traits... None of the other traits I took are going to be super bad except for the thirst and the metabolism. Food and water are going to be an issue pretty quick, so we got to secure that right away. Uh, but let's get out of the prison. Nothing here in the room that I really care about. If I was really focused on certain things, I might break the uh, break the locker and get some things made real quick. Hopefully before the, uh, the guard shows up. But uh, there is a brute wandering through the hallway here. So let's go find the brute first. Oh, we've got that temporary full night vision thing going on. What is it with this full night vision thing? I still have not figured out why this happens, but when you start a brand new game, you get this full night vision for a short bit. So I'm currently seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces out. I should only be seeing five. Night vision is determined by your perception divided by three. So that gives me a three base night vision. And then the night vision trait gives me two more, which means five is what I should be seeing. That's not what I'm seeing. So I this happens every single time now, and it's going to disappear here pretty quick. So let's take advantage of it. Oh, can we get to the door before the brute shows up? Or is the brute in the other room? That would be pretty cool. Ah, there's the brute. <laughs> Damn it. I was hoping to actually make that corner and be able to get, get away from there real fast. All right. I got to remember, I walk slower than the damn brute does now. Let's see. We're going to try to do the Brute Shuffle, which is going to be really hard at my movement speed. Because I'm not going to get two spaces of movement. Yeah, we're going to get slammed. He's going to smash us into a wall. Um, If I can get him onto the bed... No, then he moves off the bed. Let's see. If I'm standing here, he's just going to come straight up. He's not going to step on the bed. I've been able to juke around him most of the time in other characters, but with the uh, negative bionics on my feet... Oops. Hey, you can go backwards through the menu now? Hey, when did they change that? <laughs> Quality of life! You used to not have to not be able to go backwards through the menu. You had to actually cycle all the way through the whole thing again. Uh, which is at the ankles. Cruel twist of fate. Poorly executed CBM surgery giving you a pair of useless bionic ankles. Useless bionics which make squeaky noises. No, it's not that one. Uh, wire induced stiffness. That's got to be the one. No. Damn it. One of these affects my movement rate. Which one is it? I thought it was... Uh, there was some kind of boot thing or foot thing, but which... Hmm. Maybe it is one of these doing it. Because I don't have... Yeah, I don't have a bunch of encumbrance there. Well, one of them. Because my movement, my, my walk speed is 125, which is pretty bad. So usually you can kind of sort set this up so you can juke around them if you time it just right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to manage it with this guy. So now I'm trying to decide... Do I retreat back into the cell, hoping I can juke around him? 
which is gonna be not likely. <clears throat> or do I stand right here, let him punch me this way so I land back here on the concrete and not get punched into a wall? Getting punched into the wall is the thing that you want to avoid. You're gonna take damage either way, but uh, smashing your body into a wall or reinforced glass is gonna do even more damage. All comes down to what I think my chances are at juking this guy. I don't think I can set the uh, the movement up. Because he's just going to advance right up the middle of the room. Yeah, examine works with the mouse when you're in the examine screen. But it used to be you could point at things without having to be in a specific screen and you could get details. So they still don't have that back. I don't know if it'll ever come back with the interface change. But, uh... Yeah, if you do the examine. Oh, by the way, for anybody that hits the X key on a recent experimental, if your little cursor appears way up here in the top corner, top left corner, go to your options, your interface, and right here where it says edge scrolling, just disable that, and uh, that'll get rid of that annoyance so your, your view and your cursor doesn't pop up into the corner of your screen. Edge scrolling's nice, I guess, if you're wanting to scroll around your screen, but I've never found that useful for this particular game. Uh, with the mouse, anyway. Um, choices, choices. I haven't done this one enough to just have a really good feel for whether I'm going to be able to get around this guy if I go up into this room. I just, I know I won't be able to align him in the way I want. Nine strength, I can't remember. I don't think that's enough to get force him onto the... Uh, Onto the uh, the locker. Well, let's let's try something. Let's go ahead and run back to our room. And I am going to grab the chair. I know this is gonna this is gonna go horribly. So the idea here is he steps on the chair. How am I gonna do this? Yeah, I think I'm going to try this. So I'm going to try to get him to step on the chair, then I'm going to go run mode, step, step, and just hope that I have just enough points to keep him from stepping off and punching at the same time. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, let's see how it works. Ooh, that was quick. You kind of leaped that last space. Whoa! Oh, I screwed it up! I still had the chair grabbed! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make a plan, you forget to hit a key, and you screw yourself. <laughs> All right, face into wall it is. <laughs> I think that might have worked. I think that might have worked otherwise. So if we get killed quick, we'll we'll try this again. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, because now I have to step onto the chair. There's no way I can get around him. I'm going to get smacked into a wall no matter what. <laughs> One, and then it'll be two, and he's going to smack me into this wall, which is preferable to going anywhere else in this room. Oh, he didn't smack me. Oh, run, run, run. Wow, how did we manage that? Well, there you go. It was all part of the plan. Went exactly how I wanted it to. <laughs> oh... Love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> hey, did our vision go back? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we still got the Miracle 7 vision. All right, let's get out of this room. So we've got uh, we've got options now. I know that room. And... Go this way. All right, well, there we go. We're out of the prison successfully. Light! We have light! Give me a riot helmet. No riot helmet. Lighter would have been nice, too. How long is our miracle vision going to last? Don't need a dissector. That! <laughs> vision pixelates! That took care of some of my visual range. Yeah, lots of lit rooms. Lots of dissectors. And one way to go. Oh, 
Well, we have an auto dock room. <laughs> That's hilarious. Second room we go into. Now we're going to have to have another conversation. Hey there, auto dock room. You got any CBMs in there for me? Ah, a whole bunch of nothing. Got some soda. Nothing else in the desk. All right. Oh, what the hell, game? I took Asthmatic and you gave me a second inhaler as my first piece of loot. Alright. So, there's our... St not quite starting room, but... Um, very nice room. We got some light. We got some parts. I could do some crafting real quick. I'll think about that. But let's go have a conversation. So, Autodoc room. Ooh, bad door. Ooh, bad computer. I don't want to hack it. No problem. Oh, they gave me the shock zombie. Damn it. Um, crappity crap crap. They had to give me the shock zombie. Um, I would have been way, way happier if they hadn't put the shock zombie in here. Somewhat random. It's about a 50-50, I think, whether there's a shock zombie or whether there's a cyborg in here. But let's talk about another thing. So, you notice these two guys? One's called a broken cyborg, that one. One's called a prototype cyborg, that one. The second part of the challenge, the reason I'm doing this challenge in particular, is there is a new thing you can do with prototype cyborgs. You can't do it with broken, you can do it with prototype. If you can disable them, EMP grenades, I believe, is the standard, or MP directional blast, or whatever, but if you can disable them, you can drag them over to the auto dock and you can have the auto dock work on them and turn them into cyborg NPCs. Which I assume will then follow you automatically. It would really suck if you then had to go through the whole convince them to, to join you. So I'm hoping that I can rescue my cyborg brethren and then uh, get them as NPCs and uh, they can wander through the lab with me helping me clear things and we'll see how big a crew we get and we'll go rampage through the game world with our cybernetic badness. But, unfortunately, I only got one of the prototypes, and I got the stupid shack zombie to deal with. So, this room, while useful and helpful, I'm not going to use... Oh, I'm so tempted to try this. Let's see. I could still do it. Do we try a... Uh, 36 minutes into the run, CBM remo removal. <laughs> Risk taking huge amounts of damage before I've secured anything. Or do I try to work my way to the top first, make sure I, I know my exit path, and then come back down again? Um, yeah. This, one, this one's kind of a rough choice. Getting the Leaky Bionic out immediately would be so awesome. I can't even express how huge that would be to survivability with this particular run. <sighs> Problem is, I've only got first aid four, computers three, mechanics three. So, you notice it says electronics affects uh, managing bionic implants, first aid uh, definitely does, and uh, computers, uh, oh no, mechanics I mean. So, yeah, a lot of things are affecting it. We've actually got some skill at all of them. We've only got an 8 intelligence. That's going to work against us. I don't have any drugs or any uh, things to boost my intelligence to improve the numbers. I can't check my numbers until I can get the, uh, the door open. This computer here is an emergency evacuation. I can activate this and it'll throw open all of these doors, including this one. That would give me access to the anesthetics and the operating theater. Um, it'll leave these guys here. And if you time it right, you can do this without any real danger. You just wait until that uh, shock zombie's somewhere back in this corner. Throw the switch, immediately start sprinting down the hallway, and then slam the door behind you. Hoping that these two guys don't step out and block your, your, your path. <laughs> that, that really sucks. Uh, but you can get through this without the shocker getting close enough to you to actually hit you with his blast. If you time it right. So, and there's no, no computer skill check necessary. You just examine the computer, pick the evac, and then run. So, that's the free easy way to get this open. Especially if it's just four cyborgs. Because these guys are super 
easy to kill, no danger really. But the uh, shock zombie, if I let him loose, he's going to kill the cyborgs and he's just going to sit in this room waiting for me. He won't be able to get through the door, but um, we'll have to deal with him at some point. <laughs> 